In this video, I'm going to use an applet by Rossman and Chance. I'll put the link on the website uh, as well, so you can go and try this on your own. But uh, let me first start with just a reset here. What I'm doing is I'm, I've selected, I'm going to do a confidence interval and collect data of, regarding the mean. I'm going to assume a normal population for now, and that I have z with sigma. Now the population, if you have a, a large sample size, does not have to be normal, but turns out in their applet, if you select other population sizes, they'll use uh, what's called the t distribution, and we'll get to that in another class period or two. So anyway, I'm setting the population mean to 100, the population standard deviation to 10, and a sample size of 100 as well. And I'm just going to select one interval. What's going to happen is over here, it's going to show you the sample. Here, it's going to show you the sample statistic, just the mean for this sample. And then it's going to plot a confidence interval over here and show you how it corresponds to the, in this case, known population mean. So I'm going to sample. And again, you can see here's my sample of 100, a little histogram there. And the mean is 98, so it plots it on, on here. Now notice that the scales aren't the same on these two graphs. This one is going from 70 to 130, and this one's 96 to 104. That's because the population and the sample will both be more, way more spread out. Remember, to get the standard error for the sampling distribution, we're going to take sigma divided by the square root of n. So the larger the n, the smaller this scale will be. Um, but I do want to highlight that point that when we do get a confidence interval, it's a confidence interval for the mean, not for individual values. This would be more the individual values. They'll be a lot more spread out. Well, anyway, computed that mean, and then a confidence interval around it. And you can see right here, there's the mean, and the confidence interval is all the way around it. And in this case, it overlaps with the population mean of 100. That's the line here in the middle. So I'm going to take another sample. You can see it overlaps a little bit more. We have another sample, a different mean, and keep going, and you can see that that changes. In general, the sample will have the same kind of shape as the population, but it's random, so it's not going to always be exactly the same. So now what I'm going to do is select 100 intervals. Well, let's select 10 first. We'll select 10 intervals and sample. And now I've constructed 10 confidence intervals. This just shows the last sample that was taken. Of course, there are nine other samples that you could have had. And then here are here is a plot of the means of those samples. And I can do that again. And now you can see I have one red one. That means that's this one here. That means the confidence interval is does not include the real population mean. So if we happen to get that one, that would be one of the, if we're doing 95% confidence intervals, that will lead to one of the 5% of intervals that really doesn't include the population mean. And what a 95% interval says is that in the long run, if you construct confidence intervals using the formulas that we've been using, the x bar plus or minus z times sigma divided by the square root of n, that 95% of those intervals constructed by that process and by that formula will include the true population mean, and 5% won't. So let's up that sample, that number of intervals to 100 and select sample. And you can see here that out of these 100 intervals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 did not include the true population mean. And you can see the running total is 94% included the true population mean and 6 would not have, as in this particular one. So, I'm sorry, recalculate should have said sample. We'll get another one and another one. You can see that we have the green intervals all including the true population mean and the red one's not. Now let's look in. Let's reset this and uh, we'll select 99% confidence intervals. And what you should see is that the intervals are wider than they were in the other one. You may want to go back and look at them to verify that. And now in this case, only one of the 100 intervals did not include the true population that mean. That's because we're multiplying by a z value that's a little bit larger for the 
95%, it was 1.96, and for the 99, it was 2.576 approximately. And so remember that when you're uh, interpreting confidence intervals, that it has to do with the process that we're going, and it's 95% of intervals will include the true population mean. And there you go. That is um, one way to think about the interpretation of confidence intervals using the methods that we're using. There are other methods. Uh, that The method that we will use primarily in this course, in an introductory course, will be this. We'll, um, towards the end of the course, maybe talk about one or two other uh, methods, but uh, that's this one.